Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Miss Robolette's Corner is all about my teaching, family, and life. Right now, you are watching Miss Robbie's Classroom and I'm Miss Robbie. And today is episode 5 of our Mastering IELTS series, The Speaking Test. If you missed the previous episodes, check out the playlist at the description below. In this video, we will have a brief overview of the speaking test, speaking parts 1, 2 and 3 and some do's and don'ts in taking the IELTS speaking test. Let's get started. First, let's have a brief look on the speaking test. Remember that the International English Language Testing System is designed to help you work, study, or migrate to a country where English is the native language. This includes countries such as Australia, Canada, New Zealand, the UK, and USA. IELTS Speaking Test tests your ability to communicate on a variety of topics and speak at length on a topic. The test lasts for 11 to 14 minutes and divided into three parts. Let's talk about what to expect in speaking parts 1, 2, and 3. Part 1 focuses on general questions about the candidate's life. It lasts for 4 to 5 minutes. The examiner will start by asking the candidate to introduce themselves and will then ask further general questions. Watch the sample part 1. Let's talk about what you do. Do you work or are you a student? Yes, uh, I am both actually. I work part-time as well as a student. What job do you do? I'm a um, payroll controller. I control the payroll in a uh, property management company. Do you meet interesting people in your job? Um, not many, but uh, yes, sometimes I have to visit the banks and the sites, so yes, I do. How long have you been doing this sort of work? Um, for a year and a half now. Let's go on to talk about friends now. Are your friends mostly your age or different ages? No, many different ages. Why? Where it changes. Uh, it's basically because um, I am not from this place. I'm from back Nepal and uh, when I came here um, I met people from my country as well as uh, people from different places at work and at uh, different places. So they're all over the place. <laughs> Do you usually see your friends during the week or at weekends? Um, it depends. Uh, I see them all uh, over the week, I think. Work friends at work, after work drinks and things like that. So, yeah, all throughout the week. Okay. The last time you saw your friends, what did you do together? Um, we went out uh, for a movie last Saturday. Uh, there was this interesting movie that we heard had, was out on due date, so we all decided to go for it, and it was pretty nice. In what ways are your friends important to you? Oh, they are very important to me because I hate to be lonely. I need to talk to someone um, every now and then because I can't just sit, uh, not to say do nothing, but I need someone to confront and talk to, so I hold them, I give them a great importance in my life. I'd like to move on to talk about food and cooking now. What kind of food do you like to eat? Um, I like uh, Asian food quite a lot um, because it's it, because of its taste, its variety and things like that. What kind of new food would you like to try? Um, that would be French. Mm. Uh, pure French food, I would say. Why? Um, I've heard a lot about it, but um, because of its taste, its originality, so, but I haven't got a chance to have the original French food as yet, so yeah, I would like to try that. Do you like cooking? No, that's not just my cup of tea, not at all. Why not? Um, I don't know. Uh, I've been here for three years now, and I am a single. I live alone with my friends, but... Uh, it just does not come into me even when I enter the kitchen I think I go grocery shopping and I do things but once I enter the kitchen I just end up making some noodles and uh, just two minute food and that's it I end up I end up having that but I never got into cooking and one interesting thing I don't know the taste of salt so I, I don't know I, if I cook and I 
call my friends over it would be a disaster <laughs> what was the last meal you cooked uh that was that was stuff uh just noodles again i would say no pasta <laughs> two minutes food again in part 2 the candidate is given a task card which has a topic and specifically four points to talk about Three of these points usually focus on describing something and the final point asks for reasons for something. The candidate has 1 minute to prepare and then should talk for 1 to 2 minutes. The examiner might then ask one or two more questions on this topic. Watch sample part 2. Tina, now I'm going to give you a topic and I'd like you to talk about it for 1 to 2 minutes. Before you talk, you will have 1 minute to think about what you're going to say. Okay. You can make some notes if you wish. Do you understand? Yep. Here's some paper and pencil for making notes. And here's your topic. I'd like you to describe an interest or hobby that you enjoy. Mm-hmm. All right, Tina? Yep. Remember you have 1 to 2 minutes for this, so don't worry if I stop you. Okay. I'll tell you when the time is up. Okay. Can you start speaking now, please? Okay. Uh my uh interest or hobby that I enjoy is shopping and a bit need uh to spend time with my family or friends or especially I want to do volunteers uh, uh for shopping. I think when I feel straight out, uh, I can shopping, I can relax uh with the uh, to buy a new clothes to for me uh, in the special days uh, and in picnic uh, i think uh, picnic and travel i think i can uh, uh, widen my knowledge uh, uh, as well as i can uh, make my, more friends uh, from many countries and especially if i uh, um, travel with my friend or my family i can spend time to understand them uh, and uh, um, for me the the more uh, important uh, is a uh, do volunteer because uh, uh, I love uh, actually I love the people so I want to spend time to help them to overcome uh, or try to get over the problem so I often in, before when I live in Vietnam I often go to the uh, church and uh, or some association and uh, um, I I can uh, I often ask my friend to um, to contribute uh, and uh, give a hand to help the poor people or the old people because I think the old people also uh, my is look like my grandparent so I want to take look care for them. Yes. Yeah. And in the future I also want to uh, build the, the 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 big house and I will um uh, I will uh maybe i will take the good care for all family or the children and i think i uh they will have a better life i hope that thank you do you think you'll always be interested in this yeah i think that when i engage with the do volunteer especially i i feel uh straight out is a uh, disappear and i enjoy with it Thank you. May I have the booklet and the paper and pencil back, please? Thank you. In part 3, the examiner asks the candidate questions on the topic in part 2, and they have a conversation on that topic. This part is 4 to 5 minutes long. Watch sample part 3. We've been talking about an interest that you enjoy and I'd like to discuss with you one or two more general questions related to this. Let's consider first of all the social benefits of hobbies. Uh what are some of the ways that having a hobby is good for a person's social life? Um I think sometimes um people need uh some casual social life that if they have a hobby actually they could probably um for example connect stamp they could use this to make new friends um and could um share the feeling with them and help them to make new friends yeah i think on um, probably in this way it could in- increase uh his social life do you think all hobbies are good for a person's social life 
Mm, not really. It really depends on what kind of hobbies do you have. For example, some people um, would like to connect a um, sports car. Actually, it's not any, everyone could do it because, as we know, it's very expensive. And, and you shouldn't to be too addicted to uh, your hobbies. Yeah. So if a person is addicted to their hobbies, if they spend too much time on, on their hobby, yeah. does that have negative effects for a person? Yeah. As the example I gave before, um, if he really um, addicted to um, correct um, sports car, actually I think she, uh, he need to, um, he probably spend a lot of money into it and time. And if that happened, could probably could damage his family as well, yeah. Most people have some sort of interest or hobby. Why do they feel the need to, to have that, do you think? Um, I think the most important reason is because in contemporary society, um, we almost feel a lot of pressure, either from work or from study. And so we need some um, casual activity to release our pressure. How does it release the pressure, do you think? How, uh, I think people do have hobby because they enjoy it and doing this kind of activity. So um, it probably could help them to temporarily forget what happened for the day life, uh, sorry, the day work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have a, uh, a moment just for yourself. Okay. Let's talk about leisure time now. Do people in China have more leisure time or less leisure time compared to the past nowadays, do you think? Mm, I think definitely less. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that? Because the competition in China is really uh, stressful. And uh, as we know, China um, Chinese people are working very hard and most they too focusing on, on their they fo too focusing on earning money activities, and uh, um, so everybody just presume um, the luxury stuff and uh, spend too much time and uh, uh, resources on that. So mm -hmm. I don't think they have enough time um, to have a casual life. Do you think they should have more leisure time? Yeah, definitely, because it's very important for your healthy, and and also um, we are not just. Um, our life is not just for working, we should enjoy our life as well. What do you think will happen in the future? Do you think that people will have more leisure time in the future or less, even less? Mm, I think it really depends on um, what, what kind of life they have. I think um, probably for young people, they definitely has less leisure time mm -hmm. because they have been working hard so they can retire earlier. But for the elderly people, they definitely have more leisure time, so uh, they have more um, resources and time to enjoy yeah, their casual life. All right, thanks, Tina. That's the end of the speaking test. Thank you. Here are some strategies when taking the speaking test. Do speak as much as you can. You have 12 to 14 minutes to show the examiner all your skills, so use the best language you can throughout. Expand your answers by giving examples or reasons. Do try to look confident even if you do not feel it. Smile, sit up in your chair and take deep breaths. Do speak clearly and try to sound interested in the topics and questions. Do try to speak fluently without too much hesitation. Do use fillers to give you time to think or cover hesitations. Do speak as clearly as possible. Do use intonation to communicate interest, surprise, disappointment, etc. Do use a wide variety of language. Do try to be as accurate as possible, but without disrupting fluency too much. Do use connecting words or phrases to join ideas together. On the next episode, we will have a grammar series, reviewing grammar concepts and IELTS. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content. Thanks for watching.